Hello. Hey, hello, welcome. Hello. <laughs> we're here. Well, we made it. Yeah, we're kind of here. Sort of. Kind of here. Mostly. I'm here. <laughs> but is anybody Eric really is not here? here. Er no, Eric oh, is not here. yeah, that's true. Eric is yeah, not here. Eric has passed away. He has passed yeah, away. He's gardening. Accident. I mean, we're we're assuming so. Um, <laughs> uh, Irk is such a huge fan of Breath of the Wild. He decided to go out into the wild to try to recreate the game. Um, before he left, he stripped down to his underwear to have the perfect Zelda experience, um, and he just walked out of a cave. And uh, we haven't heard from him since. I knew it's it was all over. I knew it was all over when he made that risotto stuff from the game, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was it was just just starting, and we could we could yeah. see it. We knew the path he was going down. It's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> it really <for> sure. is. <laughs> so how's your guys? Oh, so, how's everybody uh, doing? Everybody feeling good? Feeling good so far. Working through it. it was... Working through the week. Busy week. Hectic week. Oh my god. This week. Mm. <laughs> I, I want to say my week is busy, but it actually hasn't been. I've done nothing. I watched nothing. Um, I watched all work? of the Defenders. I, I, did, I did work. I went to work. <laughs> uh, some days I stayed late at work. Most days I didn't. So it was, it was a pretty awesome. light week. Um, I watched all of the Defenders on Netflix. What is um, that? So the Defenders takes... Uh, Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist and puts them all into one series Avenger style. Oh, or like crazy a few episodes or something. Uh, it was actually it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, not as good as season one or two of Daredevil, but like that's a pretty high TV bar. Yeah, I I, I totally recommend watching things. it. Really? Oh, you should yeah. watch Daredevil. <laughs> like start with Daredevil. It's amazing. Okay. Hmm. It's wonderful. Fair enough. Has anybody uh, seen uh has anybody seen it yet? No. Mm -hmm. We are getting I, I want to see that. I want to yeah. see that. I haven't seen it. I think so, we're going to go I'm see it tomorrow. Awesome. We're going to go see it tomorrow, so it should be good. Nice. Let me know how it is. Will, we'll do absolutely. I I am not a big horror movie guy. Really? Like I love playing I love playing horror games, but I don't I don't go to horror movies. It's like the last horror movie I went to was like some slaughter b movie at christmas time thing like it was it was just bad in the vast yeah. majority of horror movies aren't the kind of things that will psychologically shake you to your core it's like oh wow look it's a jump scare okay yeah. that was fun <laughs> it, yeah. it seems it's like it's cheap horror thrills it's one of those genres of movies where most of them are not very good but there are some that are really good okay yeah and and there's two kinds too. There's the there's the ones that are marketed towards like teenagers going to the movie with their girlfriends and you know, woo, spooky kind of, but whatever. And then there's the ones that are like you know, like slasher movies for all the dudes that grew up in the eighties and they're like, Oh yeah, fuck yeah, guy with a machete. Right. And then there are ones <laughs> then there are like really actually psychologically creepy ones, uh, that are a little more uh I don't want to say artsy, but more. Ah, uh, what's the word? What? So it's I don't want to say good because yeah, like they put more thought into it. It's less of a, yeah. you know, we make this movie to make money. It's like we made this movie to actually scare you or to make you uncomfortable or to tell the story. Right. Uh, yeah. A good example of that is It Follows. That's a good one to watch if you're. If oh. You, like and the sound actually, Tom. This is interesting for you because the guy that did the soundtrack to It Follows is the guy that did the soundtrack to um, Hyperlight Drifter. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's crazy. So even if you don't watch the movie, listen to the soundtrack. It's very creepy, and also hmm. that same sort of, you know, electronic uh, sound to it. It's cool. That's interesting. Nice. That's crazy. <laughs> it's cool when things like transition back and forth between film and and gaming. You don't get that. You don't get that that often, except for like voice actors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I wish more scary movies took the psychological road because you know like I thought the first Dead Space was good because it had like this really oppressive atmosphere and then mm -hmm. like towards the end of the game it got really really heavy on the jump scares um, and then Dead Space two and three are just trash action games um, yeah yeah they're they're action games with with jump scares um, but like I I really want like a Silent Hill equivalent movie like something that just fucks with you and stays with you way long after you leave the theater. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I watched. Yeah. I watched the Defenders. <laughs> yeah. We're good at this. I, uh, <laughs> I restarted. I restarted Jessica Jones. Which, by the way, if you if you haven't seen it, I I've known people who have complained about the writing and they say, "Oh my god, this is the worst thing ever." I hate all the actors. I hate the writing. I hate what this is about. Um, but if you ever wanted to see David Tennant play the creepiest, by far, literally, honestly, the creepiest character I have ever seen film or television you have to watch jessica jones kilgrave huh. is like he just he drips creep it is amazing and it, it's like i have never felt uncomfortable watching david Tennant on a tv screen but it's just oh holy shit it it fucks with you it's great <laughs> so yeah i i recommend jessica jones it's not everyone's cup of tea but uh yeah. but i like it I'll add that to my list of things I haven't watched yet that I should have already watched. I don't think I've ever yeah, watched start... the, and I haven't watched any of the uh the superhero um superhero series. Like TV mm -hmm. series. I don't think I've watched any I of them. Yeah. Start with Daredevil. Daredevil is fantastic. Okay. Um like after so you'll start with Daredevil, right? And you'll get to the end of season one. You'll be like, holy shit, now I need to know everything. And then then you can go through Jessica Jones. You can go through Luke Cage. Luke Cage is really good. Uh, Daredevil season two is fucking incredible. Um, and then, you know, top it all off with the Defenders, skip Iron Fist. He's a whiny bitch. His series sucks. <laughs> Fuck him. I hate Not the a guy. fan. Zero out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Negative three out of ten. Get yeah, out of here. Like, oh, my God. Even, even him and the Netflix. Defenders. <laughs> like I hated him in the Defenders because everything was just like, oh, woe is me, such and such backstory, and everyone else is like, dude, pull your skirt up, man, come on. <laughs> he's just over in the corner crying. It's not like Batman style brooding where he's just like, yeah, fuck the world, I'm gonna bash in skulls because my parents are dead. Right. It's like, oh, my parents are dead. I I hate Iron Fist. <laughs> wow, oh, yeah. so tell, bad. Tell me, tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's transition this into video games. Oh, why do we do food, that? right? Food? No, no. We'll get to that oh. later. We've got plenty okay. of time. But <laughs> while we're on the subject of superhero series, what about superhero games? Superhero what, games. What, uh, are there any Marvel or DC or whatever games that you guys have played ever that you like? What, what, is, what are your top ones? My, my personal favorite at one point was just Spider Man. Just the Spider-Man yep. series Spider was so fun. Just like just which one? Um, I played the what, one on the not? PlayStation Two. I think is the one that I played. Or PlayStation, was that yeah? Was that Spider-Man Two? Uh, Spider-Man Two was amazing. I think the, that the was it. Yeah. Throughout the city. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was, was like great. I played. I played. Okay, so I played that one, and I also played uh, Saints Row. I don't know if you ever played Saints Row the fourth one. It wasn't a Marvel yep. DC one, but but you were yeah. a superhero and like you jump around the city. It was the same city as the as Saints Row Three, but it kind of gave a different experience. And in that mm -hmm. one, you had the ability to like super jump, super speed, or flying. Eventually, you can get all of them because you know you just could become overpowered. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. But um, in in those ones, in in that one in particular, it just didn't feel as fun. Uh, you didn't feel as much as a part of the city as when you were just web slinging. I don't know if it was like you actually interacting with the environment, whereas if you're flying, you're just trying to avoid the environment. So it's not like pulling you into what's around you. With Spider-Man, mm -hmm. you you're really exploring. Just you know, you're really like making contact with things and dealing with things. So I'm so excited for the new one. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna ask if you'd seen anything on that new one because it oh, looked really right. good. They it showed looks, it. It does look really good. I'll definitely be picking up as soon as it launches. I'm 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 so excited for it. That's so there was an the, the thing was about Spider Man, Man too. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was actually <laughs> there was this old Spider Man game on I think it was Sega Genesis that I hmm. played a lot of. But I can't remember exactly if it was just Spider Man or if it was Spider Man something or another. It was like a just like an action platformer, I guess. It was or side scroller beat 'em up kind of thing. Right. Oh, yeah. Like uh, I, like the I Power Rangers one? I, I have it. It's over there. It's on my shelf. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. that's a great game because it had a ton of different Spider-Man villains in it. And uh, uh -huh. it actually felt like you were Spider-Man. That's awesome. Yeah. There were there were some there were some control issues with it, but uh it was right. it was actually well, a really yeah. good game. 
the thing about yeah, spider-man cool. 2 though with the web slinging is i think that feels better than a game like saints row the fourth uh in, in saints row 4 it had a myriad of issues i'm not right gonna delve right, into. right 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 mm-hmm. we will later if we ever stream it um <laughs> but spider-man 2 um made you feel like spider-man because you would be web slinging throughout the city and it was great and then you'd hit like a patch of suburbs or you'd hit um you know an area where there's a bridge and you'd be like holy fuck i can't get away my mode of transportation now no right. longer works because there's no big buildings around me. I've really got to be on my guard or I've got to be careful and not, you know, dive into this area. Mm-hmm. Um, it made you think like the superhero, which is really, it's a novel concept. You know, um, if you if you want to get your fix for Spider-Man 2, like the old Spider-Man 2 game, mm-hmm. the, there's a mobile version that's really good and it has the same really? feeling yeah it's really good you're like oh mobile <laughs> we talking about mobile games now yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously it's actually good it it it's it has everything you need as far as like a jump in and go spider-man mobile game it's awesome interesting and it, I yeah have no idea about that. right yeah it's good it's one of those ones that you'd see like ah oh, spider-man mobile game yeah you just keep going, yeah. you know. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. yeah. So, but Any this mobile game, I'm, I'm generally just like, ah, I don't. Pretty care. skeptical. Don't, it's not worth the phone battery. It's gonna kill. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. The Spider-Man mobile game was a blast. Um, nice. it's 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 it feels a lot like the um, PlayStation Two version. Of, you know, it, it was good. It was really good. In that same mm-hmm. vein, a lot of the PS2 ports that have come over to mobile are actually really good. Like Grand Theft Auto, uh, Vice City, and all those ones. Mm-hmm. That is really good. They ported it's, very as as nicely. Have, as long as you've got a controller to play it with, because playing on the touch yeah. screen is not very good. No way. I, yeah, I still need to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I've never connected a controller. You're, Tom, we're going to sit down one of these days, and we're going to... Well, um, you can get... You can go to youtube.com <laughs> slash 72-pin connector uh, and pick up one of these... Uh, 8 bit dough NES 30 Pro gamepads that we have a review video up there for. Uh, they're not paying us. I'm just really happy with this controller. <laughs> <laughs> and then for another $10, you can get this cool thing that you hook to the controller and snap into your phone. Oh, I have. On the go mobile gaming. I have. Nice. Where is that? I have something. I have something that, that's along the same vein. Can, it should be right no, you here. Can, you can use. Uh, can't you use a PS4 controller? Ha! Ah, 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 yeah. Phone? This this thing. Yeah, any Bluetooth controller. So I, I have this thing. And this is uh for the PlayStation uh two controllers. It has like a little PlayStation hole and like oh, yeah. start select and then you just clip those in and it holds it and then it has like a nice little expandable thing. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. But I don't know how Thanks. to connect the PS4 or PS2 controller to it. I have no idea. Oh, oh I will I will walk you through. It yeah, tell really, me because really I easy. I would love to do that because I because there's this thing called um what is it? Uh, Moonbeam, Moonbeam, Moon something, and you can Moonlight, you, Moonlight. That's the one. Thank you, <laughs> Moonlight. Uh, I don't you, like Moonlight, but that's that's uh, an aside. Okay, well, Moonlight lets me says that can stream my games from my uh, my PC directly to my phone. I'd like to see how that works. <laughs> that that is the promise, indeed. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm guessing I'm not going to. I'm not going to get my hopes up. Never mind. Um, okay. <laughs> no, no, try it out. Try it out. On on my laptop, the decoding didn't work well enough. Like, I, I got major frame drops. Um, uh, I am going to bring up uh, a piece of news later that I forgot to write down, uh, specifically about game streaming. So I'd stay away from Moonlight and use this other thing. Well, um, why don't... But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, I guess I guess we could talk about it now. Might about as well, yeah. I mean... We're on the subject. I, I gotta say, though, the best superhero game of all time is Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I mean so. hands down. It was I great. I never actually played through it. It's I really good. It it's really good. Think, oh, yeah, it's it's excellent. It's it is definitely worth worth uh, the, the best time. Batman game I've ever played. And and nice. really just a, like even if you take away like all the franchise rights and everything else and just made it a standard action game, mm-hmm. it's fucking good. It's really fucking good. The combat yeah. is um it's punchy. It's not heavy, but it mm-hmm. feels heavy. Like every hit right really Impactful. feels like it connects the nice. um when you're the environment interacts with the combat system so when you're near a rail like batman will grab someone's face and like smash it into a rail <laughs> right you know, batman will never kill someone but he will paralyze them for life like that's just a batman <laughs> thing that's fine that's okay as that's, long as no yeah. one dies it's cool 
Um, yep. Asylum I liked better than Night. Was it? I it was was Night the big, the one after that, right? That was the sequel immediately after. The no, si- no, oh, no. It was it city. Went Asylum, Asylum, and then City, and then Night. Okay, so City I played. I didn't like City very much. I didn't play. I Night. thought it was okay. I don't yeah, know. I, Asylum, I Asylum. Maybe it was just because it was too much. Like I've been falling out of really open world games. Like the more open world the game gets, the less I care. <laughs> and I think it's just because I, I have AD, it, I think it's just because I have like ADD or something like they're like yeah. go there now hurry and I'm like yeah eh, I'll go over here over there because it's cooler you know like like yeah. the, and I, then I end up yeah. not completing anything and then I turn it off yeah I, I really appreciate a good linear game and I know that some people get uh, there's there's a little bit of animosity at linear story games or or action games or whatever sometimes but i really like just a you know this is what happens in this order and you go through it once and then you're done and you've experienced everything right yeah i i've talked to people before and they they say hey, i'm not going to buy this game because it's not an open world I can't choose my path. I have this one thing to go down, and if I don't mm. like the experience halfway through, I've got to stick with it, and that's shitty. And I, I said, but you can. The developer can way, way more easily curate a front to back total experience, total package, right, right mm-hmm. here, uh, instead of saying, well, you can do anything except most of those things are really boring and have no impact because it all has to flow together. What right. you, um, there's a usual format for those too. So like for a big open world that like is just kind of dry for me there's usually like you have a section of the game that you're enjoying and you've explored it and then at, around the end of the game everything gets destroyed and then you have to deal with this mm-hmm. chaos situation at the end that's super cookie cutter yeah and that's how you make yeah. a giant open world that you've been exploring for 100 hours unique and new right but it's not it's not the same mm-hmm. thing when you go through something um when you go through something that's really linear, you can ramp things up and you can calm things down and you can ramp things up. You can show something pretty. You can put yourself in like a little hole in the wall and, and kind of mm-hmm. navigate through like catacombs. There's, there's a whole guide and you, can, and you can really hit the rhythm and the pacing of the game. When you go mm-hmm. in and you're yourself, you have, no, you have no concept of pacing. You're not doing any of that. You're just existing. You're a farmer. <laughs> you know, you're just like yeah. farming, but it's Skyrim and there's dragons, but I'd rather, yeah. you know, <laughs> wander around and be a farmer. So I'm just going to be a farmer. And then you get bored. You're like, wow, yeah. Skyrim sucks. It's a farming simulator. <laughs> yeah, I, I think open world games um, either need a, a really open narrative um, or a really, really diligent developer. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, just like Skyrim, everyone's like, oh my god, the, the world's going to end. You have to do A, B, and C right now, and there's going to mm-hmm. be a war unless you fix it. And you're like, well, yeah, but I need but 50 cheese happen. wheels. I need 50 cheese wheels in my house, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go over here, and right, there's no bearing on yeah. it. Right, um, no problem. Right. None of that will happen until I talk to you again, so... Well, exactly. they, they, exactly. tried, now, it, they, they tried to do that. Now, what you're saying is they tried to do the inverse of that with... Um, with what was that the zombie one um frank west frank west zombie movie or zombie game uh yeah i uh, i know what you're talking about it's not dead island that's something different it's dead, dead rising something. dead rising i'm good dead rising. Yeah, that's okay. the one that's so the one. uh <laughs> dead rising has that sense of urgency right there's a time limit for the game mm-hmm. you're supposed to get through it it's totally open world and you can wander around killing things but if you don't do certain things at a certain time people will just die you're like oh mm-hmm. x died you're like oh i was busy just like driving my little tricycle around well, well x is dead <laughs> and now that's not a part of the story anymore so it works yeah but that's you know i, I like that but it actually prevented me from playing the game yes because every time i would turn it on i had this like sense of urgency like holy shit i can't fuck around in this world because i have to go do a b and c which it's okay i get that but for a certain style of gamer it will put them off but isn't that Um, interesting like that's really crazy that in that that's the same thing i did i had a save and i would just go run around everyone would die and then you know it's fine and then i just load and then try to play the actual story mode so you can't have your cake and eat it too you know you can't have a game that revolves around urgency 
you know, you have to do a completely different style of game. And I, I, I'm one to think that a modular style of game is the appropriate route, you know? I, I really appreciate what Breath of the Wild did with their world because they said, hey, um, you know, like five minutes into the game, you get your objective, your objective for the game, which is, hey, go defeat Ganon, right? Go march through that castle and kick his ass. Uh, right. But don't, and, and even the dude says, he said, but you're really in no shape to do that. Look, you've got no equipment. You're in your mm. underwear. You've got three hearts. For fuck's sake, go beef up, get some gains get some equipment, and then go kill Ganon. So the whole adventure is you trying to get better and bulkier and get your, your equipment ready and, you know, prep yourself. It's basically like an 80s hero montage right in the middle of the movie. <laughs> That's yeah. the entirety of Breath of the Wild up yeah. until the big fight at the end. Um, right. And I think that it, it both, it keeps the urgency because you do have to eventually defeat Ganon, but everything mm -hmm. you do is to is in pursuit of that goal. So if you wanted yeah. to fuck around and, and find chickens for some guy, that's okay, because he's going to give you something for it, right? Right. Yeah. I wonder if you can do that same concept. You know, almost like, okay, so so what if you could do the same exact concept in a smaller form? Like, you had a certain area that... You know, Grand Theft Auto did this. We have a certain area you can't progress to unless yep. you achieve a certain spot in the story. You know, and then something totally unrelated is cleared up and you can pass. For instance, yeah. like in Grand Theft yeah. Auto, was... you, you know, you got through a certain, like, oh, hey, uh, the, the bridge is out. We don't know what's going on. And then it would occur yeah, on the radio. There's a hurricane. There's, right. there's a hurricane. You can't, can't use the bridge. <laughs> right. It was always really <laughs> janky. It was very deus ex machina, the way they did that. So, oh, hey, the hurricane blew over. It's cool now. <laughs> right. And, but no you know what? That's there. kind of okay. In a way, you know, uh, if well, you did something it, it with is... a little bit more thought into it, like, you're like, okay, well, we need to get through this, but, you know, like, okay, well, we're building the bridge right now. You can't get through here because we're yeah. or or we're boring a tunnel or, you know, or building the boat, you know, like what what's happening? This is what's happening. And, you, you know, just go, you know, so I can't, you know, and you're like, I want to go. I want to progress the story. Like, well, you can't, you know we still have to build this boat and there's no time limit for the boat. It's just, you have to achieve X, Y, and Z like a sitcom, yeah. you know, <laughs> you have a, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's almost sitcom -y. Like you're like, okay, well I'm going to do this and everything goes back to normal and I move forward. There's also the, it's, it's speaking of, specifically of grand theft auto though, right? You find a boat early or you get a, a car or a motorcycle and you do a, like a crazy jump and you do get across that bridge right. way before you're supposed to. And you'll instantly get five starred or four starred or yeah, whatever, and, right. and they'll try to kill you. Uh -huh. um, and that, and you look over there, right? You're like, oh wait, this place is fully built. It's fully functional. It's just the cops hate me now. Uh, that <laughs> it's kind of like it pulls you out of the experience and says, hey, fucker, this is a video game now. Yeah, um, right. But I don't think Grand Theft Auto is ever supposed to be an immersive experience though. right it's that's not true. the it's not the that's perfect true. example but the method I mean, I, i'm i'm showing uh, i'm using the example of a game that when you get headshots on people their heads disappear and blood spurt, spurts out <laughs> in a cartoonish style right, right. Like, you're, you're exactly right it is not a simulator so if you did something like let's say you had a mini boss that, that's like guarding the door right and you have to mm -hmm. kill that mini boss but he has a particular weakness that you don't know Mm -hmm. And you have to navigate the world, traverse the area that you're in, and people, and you meet people, and you do help things, you know, help people with things, and then they say, "Oh yeah, you know, I know all about that. This is how you do it." And then you have to go get the item, and you go defeat the boss, like like a key situation. You have a room, you have a door, you have a key. You have a room, you have a door, you have a key. You have a room, you have a door, you have a key. And you can handle that in each in a different way all the way through. And then by the time you get to the end, you're strong enough to take on the main boss. But that way. You could properly guide the story. You can ramp the environments up, and so you can be bright and sunny in the starting world, and you can be dark and ominous in the final world. But it's still all open world. Yeah, it's as long as you give the players the ability to circumvent that if they're willing to put up with a lot of bullshit. So you're climbing like a volcano in Zelda, right? And you're catching fire, and you are literally burning alive. Um, right. If you don't have the right stuff to, to do this, right. um, you can just carry like 700 apples, which will fill up half a heart each, and 
you can just like burn up until like two hearts and then just shove as many apples into the lake <laughs> as he will fit <laughs> and then keep going through the game and every every couple you know every 30 seconds you just chug 10 more apples or whatever you can do that and i wouldn't call it a valid strategy but it would work yeah. That's um, a I speed strategy in. right there. Right. I mean, you could yeah, do I like have, I yeah. have an anti can you get away with to get to get through this game. Well, it would be yeah, interesting, exactly. especially if you scale the areas, like you scale the villains in the areas, and they're like, you're like, okay, we expect people to be about this level and about this level, and you get to the very end area. Mm -hmm. So like, you could do like some kind of epic jump while you fly through the sky and eat ten apples, and then when you land at the final <laughs> final area, you know, you have no more apples, and but you're and you have no health and you're severely under leveled and then you can mm -hmm. try to beat the final boss. You know, I guess you could do something yeah. like that, but I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy concept. I'd like to see what developers do in the long run. As far as how did the Witcher series do this? Because the Witcher series is an open world game and it's very much uh, story heavy and it got very good critical acclaim. And how did I, they I wish that? I wish I could speak for The Witcher 3. I am still struggling to get through the first game, which is not an open world at all. It is very okay. much a, a linear RPG where there are triggers and quests and set pieces, and you will finish you know, your, your checklist, and then a cutscene will happen. You will move on to the next area. A lot of people um, um, now actually skipped the first game because they didn't like yeah. it. Most it's, people It's do. kind of a drag. It right. plays like an MMO in first for single player mm. which is not a good thing yeah um i've, I've actually got the witcher yeah. too and I, I think i played a little bit of it but i never really got that far mm -hmm. um well also it's uh, hard as shit yeah so the the issue with the witcher 2 was they assume that players going into it have played the witcher 1 and in the witcher 1 you know you start out with nothing and then they're like oh here's a sword and here's a different sword that does different stuff and here's when mm -hmm. you use this one here's when you use that one oh well, hey here's this magic thing and here's mm -hmm. some enemies that you can use this magic thing with and um they they slowly introduce all these things in the witcher 2 you start the game it's like hey <clears throat> here's 17 items 47 spells and by the way here's a literal novel of lore for you to catch up <laughs> on so you understand what people are saying um yeah. Go have fun. By the way, the enemies are as hard as they were at the end game of the first. So, <laughs> yeah. but the good combat luck. Hope you're using the right sword. Different, though. That's the thing. Yeah. So, so I started The Witcher of... two. I'm like, what? What the fuck is this stuff? What is what is going on? Right. What are these spells? I don't know what to do in this game, and it's hard as shit unless you go through and read the novella. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I, the I mean, three gets rid of that problem, but. Right, I mean, I remember um, my wife played through The Witcher 2, and I think she she was doing a mission she couldn't figure out, and apparently what you had to do is you had to go to one town and read a book. Or you had to go one town, talk to someone, and they instruct mm -hmm. you to read a certain book. And then you go somewhere else, which has a library where you have a book, and you read the book, and it tells you how to beat the guy. So yeah. it's okay. a RPG to the nth degree. You know, you nice. are... It is. You, there's, no, there's no character knowledge... You know, it's just player That's knowledge. <laughs> honestly, probably why I stopped playing Witcher 2, because I just don't have the patience and the attention span for a big it RPG. It's very, very fetch questy. Very yeah. fetch questy. Uh, and, and the... Like, I'm pretty sure they took a look at EverQuest and they said, oh, wait, you can make quests based on killing an arbitrary number of arbitrary creatures? Let's fill the game with it. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, I, I'm I don't sure really a lot like of on the Witcher. I don't know how much of that's optional, though. Yeah, it, I don't know. I still I, kind I of want to play on the it Witcher too much. 3, though. Oh yeah, I, I hear three got rid of all of these issues, and it's just a masterpiece of the art form. Um, and I, I don't want to rag on the Witcher too much. I think it's a good game. I hope to finish it one day. It's just, it has not aged well at all. That's fair. Not all games can age gracefully. <laughs> So, I want to talk about food. Okay. Did you guys, did you guys eat anything <laughs> interesting? Because I've got a story, but I, I need to get your guys' stuff out of the way before I launch okay. into my tirade. Well, I found a really good hot sauce I've been, I've been using oh. called Walker's Wood Scotch Bonnet Hot hmm. Sauce. It's like a Jamaican-style Scotch Bonnet sauce. It's hmm. really tasty. Nice. I, um, I actually got some wings. Uh, didn't order sauce on them or anything. Just got naked wings and then... 
you know, I took them home and spun them in the sauce. And it was really good. Nice. It's uh, pretty nice. hot, but it's not like kill yourself hot. And it's got a great flavor. So <laughs> ever since I started watching hot that, hot, that Hot Ones YouTube channel, are, are you guys familiar with that at all? No, I haven't checked it out. I don't know if I've talked about it much. It's basically they have a celebrity on every week and they eat progressively hotter wings and with each wing oh so i did see that wing. yeah yeah and they get like they get into the really really hot like novelty hot sauces nobody buys this stuff to put on oh wait you know pizza or whatever i'm but, thinking um, of something by the end of, by the end of it they're struggling to get through the wings you know it kind of takes them out of their element and then he pot, and then he's hitting them hard with these questions and stuff it's it's really good it's a great it's a great channel to watch i was thinking of the uh, one nice. where they eat the pepper and try to give a video game review Oh, no. <laughs> that's that's a good concept, though. Yeah, they. But no, like... there's there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of good guests on this show. I mean, they've had like they've had like Steve O, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, oh wow! You know, football players, Kevin Hart, people like that, comedians. They had uh, Action Bronson. Um, I'm trying to think who else they had on there that was like a big so name. What what do we got to do to get Neil deGrasse Tyson to talk about video games on this show? Um. um... <laughs> a lot let's just yeah uh, i don't okay. know if there's all anything right. we can do but we can certainly try <laughs> just let's send all, them emails right. every we month. are now <laughs> we all are right, now pod, focused podcast. exclusively on playing games that are only uh astrophysics accurate <laughs> okay sounds so, good so we're we're gonna turn this into a kerbal only podcast mm -hmm. and talk to neil degrasse tyson uh podcast listeners if you can get us a hookup that'd be great we'll send you a t-shirt <laughs> i don't know High I'm making five. promises we can't fulfill. Yeah. Yes. We could do the shirt thing. I have two extra smalls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, if anyone wants an extra small, you know, just hit us up. Nice. Gotcha. So let's get this food. Let's get this food thing out of the way. All right. What, what are you? I get. I, to oh, share? oh. I was All, right. Say, oh, gosh. All right. All right. You go so, first, Tom. I'll, I'll, I'll get to. I'll get to this. You go, Tom. Yeah. So um, I picked up uh, a meal in the box. We're like, hey, we did all the prep for you. Go, go, make this food. I'm like, oh, this is great. And I was going to pick up one, and they were out of stock. So I picked up a different one. It was um, like sesame-encrusted cod with a miso sauce or something. Mm. Okay. And I was like, huh, okay, this sounds weird. It's it's, it's Asian-y. It's, it's fish. Let's let's try it. It's got rice in it. And uh, not, not broccoli, broccolini. Oh, like, nice. Yes. Oh, we're, we're going up there. We're talking like Ooh. hipster as fuck. <laughs> Which basically broccoli. means broccoli that looks a little weird. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we got this thing, and I, I take it home, and I, I can't cook. I don't know anything about cooking. Like, I can make a pot roast, and I can make rice in the Instant Pot, and that's about it. Nice. Um, those, are, those are my levels. I have cooked spaghetti successfully a few times. Nice. Well done. Um, so <laughs> we, we're cooking this stuff, and mostly my wife is cooking this stuff, and we get it together, and it, it actually... It, during the fish prep, there's fucking bones and shit in the fish. Like, it's fresh fish. We have to debone the shit. Oh, wow. I don't think it was supposed to have bones in it, but we had to, like, <laughs> squish the fish and try to find all the little fragments of shit. It was wow. not a great experience. Um, <laughs> so we cooked this thing, we put it in the bowl, and it looks hipstery as fuck. It actually looks good and looks way more fancy than anything I would ever voluntarily eat. <laughs> we take a bite. It's not bad. It's not good. It is honestly the most meh food I have ever had in my life. <laughs> like I have, I have been to fast food restaurants where I, I have had more of a reaction than eating wow. this super fancy stuff. It, it, the flavors were were bland or non-existent in most cases. We fried the broccoli in butter and garlic, and it just tasted bland. There was That's nothing crazy. To it. The only flavor came from the miso sauce, which wasn't any good. <laughs> If they did double the amount of sauce, but did like a lemon butter sauce, it would have been amazing. But hmm. yeah, wow. it just. <sighs> uh, so we ordered Frankie's pizza, which is great pizza. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's the kind of pizza where they in the box, they've got like a sheet of wax paper on the bottom to catch all the grease. Oh, Dang. wow. That's a fancy it's pizza. so good. It is so good. <laughs> it was kind of pricey, but I got a pizza, which it's like. You know how you usually have cheese and then stuff on top of the cheese? There's yeah. so much cheese that the, the toppings are embedded inside of the block of cheese that has sat on top of the dough. Oh my god. Nice. It was it was kind ridiculous. Of, uh, it's kind of Chicago <laughs> dish style. 
it was it was so good so yeah yeah frankie's pizza yeah i'm way better than miso up. fish broccoli stuff <laughs> yeah yeah i think with another sauce it would have been good mm-hmm. maybe i don't know i'm uh, I'm not i'm not tempted to try that again <laughs> well i got something for for our food connector i figured out how thai coffee works thai coffee Right. Okay. So this is how it went down. So me and my coworker went to lunch and we're like, okay, we had, we went to get, uh, we went to get Thai. It's fantastic. So we got this thing, right. And we said, okay, we want Thai coffee. Let's, let's get that. And they put it, no, it was uh Vietnamese coffee. It's different. Oh, see, so Vietnamese coffee, you get, it's a slow drip, right? So you have your uh, glass and then you have a thing that goes on top and then you have a little thing where the coffee grounds sit and then mm-hmm. they pour water on the top and it coffee comes at the bottom, right? And it goes right yeah. down on top of condensed milk, which is great, right? Just that concept. But we knew there was more to it because it wasn't working. So uh-huh. so we're sitting there and the, and the lady brings it out. We've never had it before, he says. And we say, hey, um, how does this coffee work? You know, how does it, you know, how do we do it? And she says, yeah, and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like... All right. Or like, oh shit. Okay, so we're not gonna know how. Okay, so we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. And when the guy comes with the food, you know, we're looking at where it's dripping a little bit. Like I think that's how it works. So let's just let it do its thing. And when the guy comes back, you know, we'll just you know we'll ask him, right? Uh-huh. Guy comes up, sets our food down. We're like, oh hey, you know, thank you for our food. Um, how does the coffee work? And he's like, he's like just walks away and, and we're like okay so oh for two we, we're gonna find out how this works some random lady comes over and she says um you know uh you know what what food is that and like oh you know because she came out like kind of urgent so like oh she must you know that must be from the person you know what like the manager came out so like oh what you know what food did you get and we tell her the food we got and they're like oh yeah how does the coffee work by the way and she's like oh i don't work here and just walked away <laughs> So, so we're not getting how this coffee works. We have, we can't figure this out. It's dripping extremely slow. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and like at this point we're like kind of fiddling with the thing on the top. And then I finally, like, as we're leaving it, we still hadn't even drank the coffee yet. Cause it's at this point, it's this much condensed milk to this much coffee. And we don't think that's the proper (laughs) ratio, right? (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) So like, okay, I'm going to pay for the food and I'm going to ask the lady at the front how the coffee works. This is their main point of contact. This is the face of their, of their group. And like, let's, let's, let's go talk to her. And I, and I go up there and I pay for it. I'm like, okay, great, great. So how does this coffee work? You know, is it just like letting it drip thing? I'm not, you know, we're not getting it. And, and she like, she like nods at me. She's like, yeah. And she's like, okay, you know, 24 and 95. And I'm like, we like there's a whole like coffee experience <laughs> that no one is understanding that we don't know the concept of it we don't get it oh and wow. no one's and there's 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 not a lot of translation happening i i think hmm. <laughs> not a lot of understanding uh so we ended up just getting it, it was like half and half by the time we left and we just stirred it up and had this like really 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 strong really sweet coffee <laughs> nice. was it wasn't great oh god we later That's, did uh, we later did wonderful. find out how the coffee worked in our own yes. within our own research and and the reason it wasn't working right so it, it it has so what it is is the thing on the top is a little bowl and mm-hmm. there's a thread and you screw the thread down and it pushes it presses the coffee down and makes it drip out faster right and, that, oh. and then you pour hot coffee on the top, presses it down. It's hot. Our coffee at the end was cold because there's actually oh. a lid that was supposed to come with it that keeps all the heat in. Oh. There's another variant that actually has a weight, and then you set it on, and it, and it and the weight pushes it down, and it's the same experience except not as popular. What they gave hmm. us was the cup for one that has the weight in the top of the one that, uh, that threaded and no lid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, wow. so it just got fucked. Yeah, then so, they refused to explain how it all worked. Yeah, like how's so, the copy work? Like I don't know. Just, just fucking figure it out. We're not going back there again. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? No, we're going back there. Um, it's delicious. Okay. That food is amazing, okay. and we know how the copy works now. So there's nothing stopping us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So yeah, that was my that's, that was that was lovely. my food, that was my food story. Nice, <laughs> nice, that's lovely. Well, let's. I guess I guess we can talk about some games, seeing as we're like like really far into this, and we've mentioned yeah. a few video games. Oh, so yeah. uh, we, Adam, we talked Adam. about some concepts of open world games and stuff. So we're so you could give us some here. credit. we we actually yeah. were we, more we on talked about Batman. Yeah, and Spider Man, yeah. and a few others. Which are we're 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 good at this. Let's carry on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so Adam, did did you play? Did you play any video games this week? Uh, preferably related to food. Uh, nothing related to food. I'm sorry. Uh, no. But I did play a bad experience of a game. A bad experience oh. of a game called Supra Ball. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. Oh, so Which we played last right weekend. Away. Yeah, I just let's get this out of the way because this was frustrating. It really was. We played Super Super Ball, which was our postcast community game last weekend. Right. Which we played for what twenty or thirty minutes, and then promptly switched to Rocket League as our yep <laughs> as our Plan B postcast community game. Uh, Super yep. Ball was. It looked like it had so much potential. It looked like it could be good. And then I install the thing, and I go to run it, and it brings up a small windowed menu with a lot of mismatched-looking buttons, and I couldn't figure out how it worked at first, and then I <laughs> had to go through this training thing, and then we tried to set up some matches together, and we couldn't figure out how to do so. It was just a mess. I'm but sure it was, was very programmer was art. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, it was the worst main menu I've ever seen in any game. Absolutely. Like hands down the, the worst. I think we must have been missing something, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it says it has good reviews. We all were there. We Everyone yeah. in the lobby tried to do this thing, which was <laughs> get us all into one lobby. Yeah. We finally pulled it off, but I think we did it wrong still. Uh, I, I have no, I, I There's nothing know. about that experience that was smooth. Yeah. So Super There's Bowl no is way supposed it to be been that hard. it's supposed to be kind of like soccer except you're running around and you can catch and throw the ball and it it just it had so much promise it seems like a fun game the trailer mm -hmm. looked okay it had good reviews on Steam and then we tried to play and it just not even just the main menu and trying to get the game started but even once we started playing it just wasn't very fun it just didn't feel good no I, I think the main problem I had with it personally is it just, you know, when you when you had the ball, there's literally a button to pass to your teammate, and it sends it exactly directly to that teammate. Right. And I just don't understand. In a game like that, I think it needs to be completely, completely manual. You know, you need to aim where you need to throw it, and then you need to hit the throw button, and then right. I think that would it would balance out the gameplay more. But yeah, I just I didn't have fun with that game at all. No. There was a lot going on in Super Bowl. There was so many concepts that were thrown in that looked like, oh, wow, this will be a good idea. Let me do this thing. Like, mm -hmm. they started with the idea of first-person soccer with a gun. So, okay, mm -hmm. all right, I get that. Mm -hmm. That's that's all right. Um, and then they moved to, well, now you can attack people and knock them out for, you know, seven to ten seconds at a time, which was right. a shitty experience for everyone. Um, and then they're like, oh, wait, double jumping sucks. Let's make, like, a quintuple jump so you can, like, <laughs> keep jumping over and over and over again, but you, mm -hmm. you never need to, ever. Um, right. And, uh, I, I don't even... Uh, then there were multiple stages. There were multiple game modes. Uh, this, mm -hmm. Nothing in this game made sense. It, it looks like... I don't want to, like, disparage the developer too much. It is a free-to-play game. It looks like mm -hmm. somebody's first game, but... It needs a lot of work. I think. Um, I think it's a one of those. Lot of work. I think it's one of those things that it was good, good try, mm -hmm. but if they redid it, like they started over from scratch and just did the yeah. exact same thing over again and just you know fine tune things and rip things out, like made a Super Bowl two, 
Mm-hmm. I feel it might be really good. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, could see I agree. It's got potential. But yeah, um, Super Bowl, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe there's like this hardcore following of like six people who are just insanely good at it and they actually took the time to really learn all the mechanics and figure it out. Maybe it's better once you kind of know all that stuff, but just going into it as like, hey, let's all play this game we've never played before. It should be fun. It was not fun. So Right. I wouldn't yeah, necessarily I think, recommend it. <clears throat> I think it's the first community game where it's it's completely fallen flat. Mm-hmm. Like everyone after twenty yeah. minutes was like uh yeah we've else. given this a try it, it sucks <laughs> right let's, let's yeah. Rocket League. yeah yeah it's pretty much how it went yeah, down definitely. well i mean it yeah. was so close to that it was so close to that concept like oh we're gonna play soccer well there's a really good soccer game that we all play all the time anyway why don't we just yeah. all play that soccer let's game? just switch to that one yeah, yeah. It's way better <laughs> it's way better it's like oh yeah this mcdonald's hamburger why don't we just get like a Five Guys hamburger. Right. Or I can make hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, hamburgers well, at, are fine. At least, <laughs> at least when you go to McDonald's, though, right, you, you ask for a hamburger, and they know oh, what that yeah. means. Yeah. In the Super Bowl version of McDonald's, yeah. they, they, they just like, throw hamburger. lettuce at your car and you a mean, bun. <laughs> you mean one of the, the meat sandwiches? The meat sandwiches <laughs> add cheese? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. All, All right, right here's we, the we need, we need some cow it. bread with, with dairy. <laughs> cow right. bread with dairy coming up. <laughs> Wow. Right. Yeah, that's uh wasn't good. Other than that, um, I played a little bit more of that ballistic game, which oh, yeah? I did a Lost and Found video for. Which, not to be confused with the ballistic game that Tom did the Lost and Found video. <laughs> for. I've already made that mistake by installing the wrong game when I was going to do my Lost and Found episode. <laughs> this is not the stick figure, poorly controlled whatever game. This is the. A shiny ball of death to 80s retro wave music physics based difficult game. <laughs> um, if anybody watched me play this during the Lost and Found episode, you probably got bored at watching me try to finish that first level for 30 minutes. Oh Not exaggerating. God. It took me 30 minutes. I think it was like 32 minutes to get through that level because the controls are so. It's such a hardcore physics based game. I mean, there's just. You have to learn the physics and get good, but it's got it's just got so much charm to it. You've got this this first of, first off, it looks beautiful, um, Unreal Engine, uh, lots of shiny surfaces, high fidelity. There's lens flare and lots of just shiny things. It's a good looking game. It's a good sounding game. Soundtrack is incredible. I said that a million times as we were playing through it. That's to be said. Um, if you plan on uploading a video of this to YouTube, you're not going to get any ad revenue though, because it's licensed music in the game and YouTube's algorithms. Yeah. don't like That's a bit crazy. That's mm-hmm. it's just this whole concept of, well, we're in like kind of a different time, right? Like mm-hmm. now content creators are playing games and showcasing these games. And that's just a giant turnoff. I think as a developer of a very small indie game, you, you, tend to avoid that but right i guess maybe they maybe so, they could have but they didn't know. I, don't know I i get it um and it's it's not the developer's fault um i don't i don't think i don't think there's anything they could do so what what they did is they said hey we really like these songs um we're not going to compose our own music we're not going to hire someone to compose our own music we think these songs fit really well and we would like to pay a license to the people who own this this media to put mm-hmm. it in our game that happens all the time. That's how we've yeah. gotten some of the greatest gaming soundtracks alive, right? Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Uh, right. Just about every single Grand Theft Auto game out there. They're, the soundtracks are sometimes more popular than the games themselves. And right. that was the case with Vice City, right? right. Um, but what happens is, you know, we threw this video on YouTube, and then this song-matching company said, Hey, um, your shit matches this thing. It matches these six songs, so we're not going to take it down. We're just going to take all your re- ad revenue, which for 72-pin connector, they can have whatever part of the 11 cents that we've made. Uh, yeah. That doesn't really bug me that much. But if we're a really big channel, the only thing we're guilty of is playing a game with licensed music, right? That's mm-hmm. we're, we're not 
taking these songs and posting them wholesale as videos on our YouTube channel and be like, oh yeah, right. we added some lyrics with Windows Movie Maker. No, we're not doing that stupid shit. We, we played a <laughs> game where the guy licensed the music. So mm -hmm. I'm sure I can go and tell YouTube to fuck off and go through a process of appealing a DMCA thing, but it's, I don't know. The whole the whole thing's annoying, and I yeah. I really think this is going to happen more and more as we get more and more gaming videos up there. Well, I mean, um, just the whole licensing music in general is is yeah. it's a nightmare. I mean, they they're even going as far as taking music out of already existing digital copies of yep. the game, so you yep. can't like if you're playing a game like let's say you had Tony Hawk Pro Skater and you really like that song. And then you're like, where's that song? It's not in there anymore because they'll they go in that license ran out. They'll go in, yeah. update the game, remove songs, yeah. and now you can no longer play that version of the game with and that that's, song. That's not even the worst case scenario, right? Yeah, the worst or case that take the game off of Steam. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's something like like Alan Wake where they said, hey, we ran out of the license. Also, we're not going to pay anyone to update this, so we're just going to take yeah. it off of Steam. Like, yeah. that's that's really shitty now yeah and no one's gonna clamor because alan wake sucks but what if it's a good game right what if mm -hmm. like your your disc of tony hawk pro skater one on your playstation just vanished or it updated and all the songs went away like yeah. right it's now it's just really now it's just like birds chirping the whole time yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just like perfect like, that's yeah. that's really fucking shitty it's like a uh, long yeah. drum beat <laughs> and, and by the way, by the way, um, people have copyright struck uh, just birds chirping in the background before because there mm -hmm. are sound effect packs that you can buy of oh, birds chirping oh, and wow. it matches some real world That's birds terrible. in Trip's content ID. Yeah. yeah. So that sucks. I, but yeah. I wish this shit would get fixed. Yeah. But the game is good. Ballistic. It was a good game. Um, I played another, I think, two levels uh, the other day. A lot of fun. It's actually really good. Um, other than that, uh, some Rocket League is normal. And I, I played some of Cosmonaut, the game that uh, we've been working on, or I've, I've been helping work on with the soundtrack and stuff. So I, I got a bunch of new sounds for that done. A couple weeks ago, he implemented them into the game, sent me a test build. So I was kind of, you know, going through that and seeing all the new shiny things that were added and all that good stuff. That's awesome. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up for me. That's all I've been playing so, this week. Tom? My my list is a little it's a little short. Um, because I have spent my entire week watching Marvel stuff on Netflix instead of playing video games. because uh, I'm <laughs> I'm a bad podcast host. Uh, but excuse me. Um, so <laughs> I've been sneezing all night. Um, uh, I have been playing uh, just about every day on the bus to and from work, uh, Breath of the Wild. So mm. I finally said, all right, I'm going to start doing some DLC quests. And I've, I've avoided uh, in Breath of the Wild, except for one, one little area, I've avoided looking up anything online. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you get like a vague hint in the whole game is, I'm going to go on an adventure. You are Bilbo Baggins and you're set in for it. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to find all of the uh, DLC masks uh, in, in headgear. Um, and I found one of them so far. The other one, the one that I really, really, really want, I cannot find. I know I'm looking in the right place, but it's just not there. So I need to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, Doom 2016. Played, played a lot of that. Um, it's just great. I love Doom. It's wonderful. Nice. Um, I tried to play it on my phone, which didn't work, but I'll go into that here in a little bit later. Um, <laughs> and yes, I did, I did say that. I was trying to play Doom 2016, not old Doom, on my phone. Um, I played a little bit of Guild Wars 2 today, which is a cool, chill-out MMO. It's free. Go make an account and pull it. Um, the way they make money is uh, an in-game uh, cash shop where you can get like cosmetic shit um, or by buying the expansion packs. I, I do recommend Guild Wars 2. I think it's great. Other than that, um, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. The, uh, the old Castlevania game on the PlayStation, possibly the best Castlevania game ever made. Um, I, was, I was feeling the hankering, and it's great. The music is great. Uh, the graphics are outstanding. I keep forgetting how awesome that game is. I'm going to have to stream it sometime. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's about all I had. Uh, Josh, you've been playing a lot of weird shit. 
and you had lost and found this week. <laughs> yeah, I typically yeah. play weird shit. I don't know what it's been like. like. Normally I play... Okay, I don't typically play weird shit. I'll retract that instantly. I don't normally play normal <laughs> shit. And I play the same thing, so I'm a very monogamous gamer for the most part. But this mm-hmm. this week has been really strange. So, <laughs> I, played, uh, I played video ball. Now... Video ball is really weird. You, you're like an arrow. It's, it's essentially air hockey, right? Mm-hmm. And you're an arrow, and you shoot the ball back and forth with like your little gun, right? You can spam mm-hmm. the button, or you can hold it, charge it, like Mega Man. And you hold it, and it, and it has like three stages where it's you know stronger and stronger and stronger. And then if you hold it for a little bit longer, it turns into a little block. So you can start building walls and stuff. It's a really mm-hmm. interesting concept because it's, it's a up to four v four, a four v four game mode, and it is really interesting. But I don't know if I liked it. It seemed really, really? It, it seemed really cheesable. I mean, it seems like cheesable. one of those. It might be, you know, it might be kind of like the Rocket League concept where you first get in, you see it, you're like, oh, everyone's just kind of hitting the ball back and forth, and then there's all these like crazy metas that emerge, like, yeah. oh, okay, well, really. Yeah. You should be holding a block in front of you at all time and drop it when you know you're ready to block it, you <laughs> know, or yeah, something, yeah. or something's in there. It seems like there's a lot to be had, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe the goals are too close. It does, it does sound really interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, it's a really, it's really cool mechanically. I just, mm-hmm. it, it seems like once it's, it, it plays more like actual like soccer because the ball ends up moving so fast that if someone's not back. There's nothing you can do. It just kind of oh, slowly yeah. makes its way into the into the net, I guess you can call it the goal. And it hmm. so, I, I it's one of those things I think maybe is a steep learning curve. Um, you yeah. may you may go maybe going into it with um, like even just the bots will destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel I feel like it's something along those lines. Um, but it's a good it's a good community game like with your with your friends. The other one that I played that's also a good community game is called That's You. And That's You is, is a lot like um a lot like the Jack, Jackbox games, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh everyone uses their phone, things happening on the screen, but the production value for it seems way better. Um Oh, really? So, there's a whole application that you have to download, which I think is a little unfortunate. Um uh, so you have to download the application and then you sync it to your Wi-Fi so you don't get to connect if you are over a stream. You can't really stream it and have viewers join oh. in. It's not really an option. It's very couch co op So it connects through your Wi-Fi if your PlayStation is also attached to that home network. And that's how that functions, which is kind of a cool that's way of correct. doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the only trouble is it's a really long game. So mm. the premise of it is, you know, you all take a picture of your face and and then you do like a it's kind of like a truth or dare with just the truth portion, right? Mm-hmm. And and then everyone judges like, "Oh, who would be the most likely to do x, y, or z?" So it's like a reverse truth or dare if that makes sense. It's like, yeah. "Who's the most li- likely Ooh. who's the most likely to um, you know, end up getting lost in the woods and then everyone would vote and then whoever voted the same gets points so if you vote for if these two people vote for the same guy and these two people vote for the same guy those two teams get po- get points and then at some point it transitions to where it takes your picture and it puts your picture on the screen and it says like and it just asks questions about that person like well you know what would he most likely do in this situation and and it does that and you go through and there's like 10 rounds and there's like oh, wow. five questions each so it ends up taking forever oh and so so it's not like jackbox where they're they're pretty quick right. and you can be yeah. out of a match it's, in 15 it's, minutes i think that's the worst portion of this i couldn't find any options mm-hmm. to shorten it but the production mm-hmm. value is really good the assets like there's there, you're like in everything's kind of like specific to like an area so like you'll be 
there'll, there'll be like a camping thing and everything's centered around like camping like oh who would get lost in the woods who would do this who would do that and all revolve around camping and the backdrop is like this really pretty tent and there's like things in the woods you see bigfoot walking around and there's all this like little, all these little things and knickknacks on the ground like you know a pan or you know maybe like some soup or something like that like a very camping vibe and then it'll go to like an underground uh like uh like disco club or something or you know underground club where it's like mm-hmm. a you know like a rock concert's happening and you see all like these like things in the wall and it'd be like a bedroom and it's a school you know a school uh, schoolhouse and it goes through each thing and all the assets look really great and it's very mm-hmm. very cool nice. except you have this announcer talking and talking and talking <laughs> and he just won't <laughs> shut up he just won't shut up he's like he he's he he is like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. Like, when I was in the blah, 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 you're like, oh, dude, like, we're busy. Just, like, <laughs> tell us what we need to know and go away. But he, yeah. <laughs> he just, he will not shut up. It, it was a mess. But it was, it was a, it was fun once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I probably wouldn't go back and do it again. It, it, it's just way too involved. Um, But I did play... An interesting game, which I actually really liked. I had the Lost and Found, and that was Ninja Pizza Girl. Now, I thought, I just kind of purely grabbed this off the title. I'm like, Ninja Pizza Girl, perfect, let's go. (laughs) Done. (laughs) It marks off off the three things I love, Ninja, Pizza, and Girls. It's it's flawless. It was was flawless. (laughs) And and I went into it thinking, like, okay, this will just be, you know, whatever. I I, I actually thought it was going to be pretty bad. But mm-hmm. it was actually really, really fun. It was nice. it was pretty solid as far as what it was. It's essentially you're delivering pizzas, but you're also a parkour ninja girl, and deal. And then you also have this strange like dealing with peer pressure thing. And I'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're you run a, you run along this like. R- this route and there's all these obstacles in the way and you could do like wall jumps you can like grab onto edges and flip over them and you can mm-hmm. it, it's it's really speed runners you know it feels like speed runners but with like a mm-hmm. little bit um but a little bit more like parkour aspects like there's trampolines and stuff that makes you jump but you know okay. you're gonna grapple things and flip over them and you'll slide underneath yeah. things just like just like just very speed runners right um but then there's like other guys that try to block your way, and they'll. It's weird because they run like you'll run into them, and they'll they'll push you down, and they'll start laughing at you, and you don't get affected by them pushing you down. You just get right back up, and you start moving, and then they say like "aha loser" all this crap, and then you start getting sad, and then you just collapse, and you have to, oh. and then you have to oh, spam, you, then you have to spam A to deal with the peer pressure, and then you're like, okay, no, nah, I'm good, oh, and then you just go. So, and it, it sounds really stupid, but as, <laughs> but as far as a mechanic, seen. it worked. It was I fine. would not have expected a basically speed runny platformer side scroll game to have a, a a stress management mechanic that you have to juggle. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. That's it was weird. I feel like that's brilliant. more that's more internal from playing a game that might be difficult as managing your own stress playing the game, not managing the stress of the character you're playing in the game. <laughs> no, it was that's, it was super uh, weird. I think I think the concept <laughs> is really dumb. But I think the like how how is executed as a mechanic was awesome because it stopped you long enough for you to worry about the clock because you know you had to get through the thing at a certain time right or maintain a certain speed those were those were two kind of aspects that i got to um and you had to get through it right yeah and um and it was cool because it stopped you you had to deal with it and you're okay i'll keep going so as a mechanic it was great as like what it was doing i don't know if like if they were serious or not (laughs) as far Mm -hmm. as like trying to deal with like such a topic but it was super fun it was it was really fast paced you had to really um, it felt like a you know again like a speed runner like you had to make sure that you hit all your jumps right you had to make sure that you Mm -hmm. were doing everything right and you had to do it again and again and just to make the time and it was good it was really really good and i was i was really surprised by just like how it played i'll definitely revisit nice. that one 
Yeah, I saw I saw the beginning of your Lost and Found, but I didn't get to the part where you were managing stress and stuff. But yeah, it, but it that did, was it really did, strange. It did look thing. actually. It was it looked better than I expected. Yeah, it was it was good. It was a lot of fun. It really was. That's really cool. Yeah. So so is that it? That it that, for that that's pretty that's... much it for the week. I mean, I Ooh, I went nice. and played my normal games, but that that was pretty much all I went through. Yep, that was my that was my thing. All right, Look, on to the next segment. To, to more, Dark Souls. More Dark Souls. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> for the next six hours of this podcast, we'll be talking exclusively <laughs> about Dark Souls. Uh, and it, it will actually just be me and Josh from this point, uh, with Adam looking at us really forlorn. <laughs> hey, I played the first one for a couple hours now. You did. It, you, you got good, right, sort of. All right, yeah. No, let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's not do All right, this. We, we've, got, <laughs> Let's we've, got do this. <laughs> we've got some quick news. Uh, we've got some longer news. Quick news is Nintendo decided they like money. They are bringing back the NES Classic in 2018. I'm uh, not so yeah. get your <laughs> get your botting scripts ready. Um, make sure make sure your eBay stores are all up to date with uh, yes. an up to date PayPal account. So yep, you can. They're buy making all five of them. more. They're making five yes. more. <laughs> There's five. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, uh, Doom 2016 is coming to the Switch. Nice. I guess. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of actually. With, it kind of surprises me. Game. Oh yeah, that kind of yeah. surprises me because Doom is such a mature game. I mean, I know that the Switch <laughs> is a powerful console, but it's not like a powerful yeah. console. <laughs> like, I, I, what does it? I wonder if it would run well on the Switch or kill the battery or what. Um, they probably I may or or may not find find out. So it goes against my PC gaming master race heart to mm -hmm. say that I might buy a first person shooter on a console, but the idea of playing Doom on my ride to work portably, yeah. like kill that holy stress shit. early. <laughs> yeah, I I might need to get that. Nice. The, so, um, I wonder if they're gonna dumb it down they did that with um with actually if you saw any of the video of the new rocket league version of switch uh, on the switch they actually simplified the way things look by like a lot oh that's why that's how they're hitting at 60 okay. fps the mm -hmm. the latest uh version of that that i've seen that's coming out is it is really simplified as far as the graphics are concerned i'm really interested to see okay. if they do the same thing but with doom we have like more of a low poly build. Should be right. Should be pretty. Yeah. Easy. Possibly. I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't really um, be that surprising because right now Doom 2016 on the consoles is you know kind of a, a lower quality than you can push on the PC for pretty obvious yeah. reasons. You can push a PC to do crazy things. Consoles mm -hmm. have a very you know small box, a small defined space of what they're allowed to do with their hardware and what it's possible mm -hmm. to do with their hardware. Um. If it's you also, want to play... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's also really well optimized on the PC, too. So assuming yeah. that, that optimization kind of carries over, then, yeah. Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be cool to see it. Um, if you want to get into the Call of Duty World War II beta that happens at the end of September, uh, go Google it or something, I guess. Yeah, I don't care. I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm actually going to do that. Are you really? Yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, for another World War II Call of Duty. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm, so. I'm interested. I will be pulling it. <laughs> um, Metroid Samus Returns has released. It's been getting decent reviews so far, so Nintendo likes Metroid again. The end. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, okay, here are the two big things I'm going to talk about. First, um, PewDiePie, a very popular streamer, YouTuber, douchebag guy, um, <laughs> use the N word on stream very flippantly. We don't care. Fuck you. Um, but uh, the interesting story I want to talk about, uh, and kind of something that really affects all streamers and YouTube personalities, um, mm -hmm. if for various reasons, um, Campo Santo, the developers behind Firewatch, uh, have issued copyright strikes, DMCA strikes against PewDiePie's videos on YouTube. Um, they saw the news, they saw I said the N-word on stream, they saw it's just like, well, I don't know, man, it slipped out. Like, he's being a total douchebag, right? But uh -huh. they said, 
okay, we're issuing a copyright strike against you doing Let's Play as a Firewatch. So they essentially took down his videos and gave a, a copyright strike to his account. Um, while I completely agree that PewDiePie is kind of a, a toolish douchebag, um, I completely disagree with Campo Santo. Just saying I don't yeah. like you and using the Digital Millennium Copyright Act to remove something because you don't like the person behind it, not necessarily the content. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the dude was like, oh, look, I modded the game and now there's a bunch of like naked people <laughs> in Firewatch. Like, I, I get yeah. that, right? Copyright, strike the fuck out of it, take it down. You fucked with our property and we don't like what you've done with it. But literally, they just took it down because they didn't like the guy. Yeah, that's, that's shitty. It's technically, and I, I read the articles, it's technically legal. I get yes. that, but I don't really, I don't think that you should be able to take down somebody's videos just because of reasons like that. I completely agree. I, I think if I were PewDiePie right now, um, which thank God I'm not, but if I were, I would be fighting this copyright strike very, very hard. Um, being able to flippantly use the DMCA like this should be illegal. Currently, it's not. Currently, Campo Santo, what they have done is 100% legal. You can just fire off a DMCA complaint because you don't like the color of somebody's shirt, right? There really doesn't have to be anything uh, to do uh, to fire off one of these complaints. And with the way YouTube is built and the way YouTube responds to DMCA takedown requests, mm -hmm. they don't have to have an internal battle. They don't have to prove anything. You don't have to go in front of a, a judge or an arbitrator and state your case, YouTube mm -hmm. just takes your shit down. Um, and they say, well, you might be able to fight it if you click this button and, and you know, eventually that could erupt into a legal battle, but whatever. Try to fight it and then we'll review it in a couple weeks. But by mm -hmm. that time, you know, you've lost weeks of revenue at the very least. And for yeah. a person like PewDiePie that has literally built their their uh you know life on streaming and on youtube and on the money they make from this having your videos being taken down or having your streams being taken down due to bullshit requests is literally taking money out of his pocket um yeah. now i'm not here to argue whether or not he should have made money in the first place i never really liked the guy i thought he was kind of a hack um apparently now he's also a racist hack this is <laughs> really just talking about the principles of the thing i i, yeah. I, I, I don't oh go ahead I don't even have, I don't necessarily have a problem with them not wanting their game associated with somebody that said something they don't agree with, but at the same time, I, I don't know. It just doesn't sit well for me. For me, the it fact that they took the videos down or that they wanted to. For me, it seems like it should be isolated to the video. Like yeah. if he if he's dropping mm -hmm. hard R's yeah. in uh like in the video the, of their game, okay pull it but if he's not and it's just the video and the video of him playing that is great fine clean everything's great then that's mm -hmm. fine but he wasn't playing their game yeah he was playing a totally different game yeah. on a totally yeah. different stream and it's not and it wasn't even on youtube yeah, so so this this twitch. this situation happened on twitch among friends on a totally different game to be able to pull random content for no reason that's where i have the problem if you are you know if you murdered someone and you talked about murdering people <laughs> then okay maybe <laughs> like maybe we could talk about like okay this guy's I, I a psychopath but at the same I don't time even think that but at the same time if you're like if the video itself if the video itself of him playing your game has him saying like horrible things the whole time okay pull those videos but this is a totally separate thing it's like it's like if i was walking around in public you know and i'm just a shitty person and over here and you started pulling all my content because you saw me in the subway or something like i feel like i feel like that's the same thing in a way mm -hmm. i i could start a so, new game development well, company and so, you know, it becomes a big thing and all these YouTubers start making videos with my game and I say, you know what? I really don't like people that wear glasses. So any streamer that has glasses that plays my game on YouTube, I'm going to file a DMCA claim and get them pulled off YouTube. 
Right, right, and exactly. I think you can actually do that right now. I think there that means there's definitely a yeah. fault in the system. Uh, in in really, I've got to give a uh, a decent part of this blame to YouTube, right? Like the the majority of the blame lies with Campo Santo. I get they don't mm-hmm. want to be associated with him. If you if you really feel that strongly about it, go to your corporate blog and just say this dude's a fucking retard, right? Put out like a big post, throw it on Twitter. Fuck you, guy. You suck. And and leave it at that, right? Make your position perfectly known. Um, go go de- gen- um donate and put up like a donation page. Uh, to a charity that you like that that supports whatever people a streamer might disparage and and get on with your life but i have seen the same shit happen um a company will see a review uh konami has fucking done this they did this to um to super bunny hop uh who's a a pretty famous youtuber he does a lot of game analysis and uh in-depth looking at stuff uh i am subscribed to his channel i like the guy uh but he did a video on Konami and kind of the shit that was going down when they were starting to close up shop and being a being pricks to Kojima. Um, mm-hmm. So he did an in-depth analysis. They fucking DMCA'd his video, and it took a like basically an internet uprising twelve hours to get it put back online. the The fact that you can say something that a company doesn't like, and the company with a single DMCA strike can wipe your content off of YouTube, that's a huge problem with their system. The DMCA. And content ID systems in YouTube really need to be changed. It's far too easy to go in and say, I don't like this content, I don't like this content, I don't like this content, they're gone. What if Nintendo, when they put out ARMS, said, "Mm, we're going to get rid of every single bad review on YouTube? And they picked and choose. That is totally legal, right? If you use (laughs) any, any of the content of ARMS in your review of ARMS, um, they, they could take it off right now you can argue it's a defense it's not a guarantee you can argue that uh we're doing this for journalistic reasons we're doing this as purpose of review um that is not a get out of jail free card that will not get your youtube protected or your your video protected by youtube in any way Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i think i think we checked the box for tom rage (laughs) (laughs) there it is yeah that was good i liked it yeah um, on to happier news. So, uh, Josh, you were talking about Moonlight and trying to get Moonlight up and running and you can stream, you know, PC games to your phone. And that's that's kind of cool. But last time I tried Moonlight, I got 10 frames per second. You don't want that, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so give this a shot. Um, I've only been using it for uh, a couple days, so I'm not entirely familiar with it. But Parsec.tv. Um, it is game streaming. They've got a single client. You can install it on your gaming PC at home and then install the client on Android, on a Raspberry Pi, um, which is a $35 computer, if you guys don't know. Um, you can put it on <laughs> other machines, your Mac, whatever. And you can stream from your host PC um, out to whatever other client you've got. And it works really, really well. Really, really well. All right. Nice. Um, so I've actually got this on a uh, there's there's a, a bunch of different cloud providers that offer GPU uh, cloud servers. I've got one stood up right now with Parsec mm-hmm. on it. Uh, mm-hmm. My current gaming PC has 122 gigs of RAM. Oh, yeah, just a what? couple. <laughs> Jeez. No yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I I don't get the option like they've got like tiers and. I don't have the option to make it lower, uh, but yeah. So if you wanted to set up like uh, a cloud system to play games on, uh, make sure to turn it off when you're not using it, or else it'll keep charging you money. Uh, but you <laughs> oh, can wow. literally pay pay by the hour for a gaming rig. Um, in Parsec, it, you don't have to set this up yourself. They have a thing where you can pay them money, and they do all the server work and they stand it up themselves. It's actually a really cool system. Huh? That's interesting. I didn't even know something like that existed. That's really cool. I know. I mean, I know you could do it because you have PlayStation Now, which is well, yeah. essentially streaming. And then you have. Uh, I mean, I was playing. Um, uh, what is it? Don't keep talking, no one explodes, and I was streaming that to my living room on a really subpar laptop, and it was great. So I know yeah. game streaming exists. I wonder if that's going to be the future of how you play games. You know, absolutely. Uh, I I feel like that might be what people will be used to you know you'll just have a monitor and your keyboard and mouse and that's all you'd use because it's in the monitor and 
You're just streaming things. You don't need anything else. So it's it's really cool. I, I went and I installed Doom. I installed Guild Wars. I installed Rocket League. Uh, Parsec, I haven't gotten it to work on Android yet, but you can use a controller and it passes it through just perfectly. So wow. my my issue with Dark Souls streaming is fixed thanks to Parsec. I can now I can now stream using this client instead of Steam's in-home streaming. And by the way, Parsec will actually give you a full desktop view, so you can alt tab out. You can do other things that Steam in-home streaming won't give you. Um, hmm. It's really cool. Oh, and by the way, the software is free. Wow. So oh, go pull okay. it if you if you like forward ports on on your home machine uh, through your router. You mm -hmm. can actually do across the internet game streaming from your house. Wow, that's really cool. Very yeah, cool. it's it's really cool. Uh, but that's all the news I had. Was there any last minute stuff you guys wanted to jump in? Um, other than a few shout outs that I think we have, or at least one. Um, I think Indeed. I think uh, that's all for me, Adam. Um, no, I really can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll just go right into the shout outs then. Um, Adam, do you have that up? I do, yes. So Sidewinder, our buddy Sidewinder, thank you for the subscription today. <laughs> Thanks, and, Ed. Um, I appreciate yeah, that. I'd also like to thank myself for the subscription, subscription today. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot my Prime thing was up, and uh, I tried to use our little emote thing in chat to be stupid. And I was like, oh, you're not subscribed here. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, oh, shit. Is mine up? Uh, Mine's probably up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that. We're good at this. Kind of, yeah. All of our, <laughs> yeah. all of we, our, we are, income, we are professionals. Either way, Sidewinder, you're you're number ourselves. one, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sidewinder, for this for the subscription for real though. Not even joking. Right, I really absolutely. appreciate that. Super cool. Yeah, your your um, subscription helps me get even more gigs of RAM because 122 <laughs> is not nearly enough. Um, yeah, I guess like the graphics card and whatever gaming cloud server I'm running uh, has enough umph to like encode 18 1080p streams at the same time or something. A what? Damn. Yeah, like wow. it's it's nuts. Last minute it's shout out, nuts. V Dobby. Thank you for subscribing with Prime. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh. Down to yes. the wire. Down to Snuck the wire. Snuck in a chair at the end. Just murder. Before. Murder those subscribe <laughs> buttons. Kill them. Stab Drop them. a hydrogen bomb on the subscribe button. <laughs> Decimate the population. Just of the don't say any buttons. racial slurs on stream. Yes. Oh please. shit. Proto tricks. Proto tricks. Oh button. my god. <laughs> Holy crap. Stop All these people not... right at the end. <laughs> Let us stop. It's not going gonna... <laughs> to gonna... prevent you from getting timed out. But... Yeah. But thank you anyway. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. <laughs> wow. Thank. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Yeah, Chris, I think Chris, I think that's Chris, all we've Chris. got, unless unless someone else uh, unless someone else subscribes last minute. Uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in to seventy two Pin Connector. Um, <laughs> you can catch us all over the internet uh, at I'm I'm pulling up our list so I don't forget anything. <laughs> um, yeah, it I I agree, Sidewinder. This is just another fake ending. <laughs> um, if you want to subscribe to our podcast in mp3 format or see any links including our discord channel head to 72pinconnector.com follow us on twitter at 72pc podcast you can get us on youtube where we post lost and found irk side of the moon and jolly cooperation every week youtube.com slash 72pinconnector and if you're really old school you can email us uh, fan mail at 72pinconnector.com <laughs> I will not open any PDF.exe files, so don't you even try. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. Um, tonight, the postcast community game is World of Tanks. It is free on Steam. Go pull it. I will be playing on my cloud gaming rig, which I am super happy with. Thank you, Parsec.tv. Uh, they are not a, um, a sponsor, but they, they make cool technology. Uh, yeah, so join us then. We'll have it up here shortly. If you would like to just watch or hang out or chill, um, we'll be back soon. Thanks, Absolutely. everyone. Bye.